welcome to Not Your Typical Church Ladies, Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. I'm Vicki, and each week I am joined with my fellow workers in the vineyard, Anne and Karen, to break open the Sunday scriptures and talk about life and faith and everything in between. Join your Not Typical Church Ladies on this journey each week. Oh my gosh. Hello, everybody. Happy Easter. Um, Remember, Easter is not a day. It's a season. So we will have many days to celebrate um, our alleluias after this time of traveling in the desert and the heavy readings that we started Lent with. Uh, Welcome, Anne and Vicki. So Anne is so good. And she rewatched our podcasts from the last year or two. Last two Easter's. Last two Easter's. Right. And um, you know, we we really have said what we <laughs> what we needed to say about being an Easter people. Um, so we thought we would do something a little different and just kind of share some experiences with you and some thoughts to end our season of Lent and begin our season of Easter. So Anne, Vicki, who would like to start us off? So we are in Easter now, it's official. And one of the things I always love about Easter is, um, you know, we were talking about traditions we have and growing up, um, I just, I grew up in a low income household and there was a lot of back and forth. I had a very uh, not stable childhood. That's the easiest way to say it. So I am, I love decorating. I love decorating my home. Um, you know, like my home is my home. So, and I do hold off decorating for Easter until Easter. So it's, I get home, you know, we all work for the church super late on, you know, Easter on Holy Saturday after the vigil. And it's like, all right, like, eggs are popping out of everywhere. Easter bunnies are going up. My husband's, it's like a tornado goes to the house and turns it into the spring wonderland. Um, the only year that didn't happen is I'm an April birthday and you know, our late March, early yes. April, I feel you because when your birthday falls during Holy week or Easter, um, that takes precedent for me. So, but last year I didn't decorate as much, but that's one of my favorite things to do now as an adult is really welcome in spring and Easter by like pastelling the house with all of you. <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. And it like reminds us, reminds me of like people, I know somebody who just took their Christmas tree down last weekend, it wasn't <laughs> me, but they just took it down and I'm like, you know what? Go for it. It's the whole season. But I love how like, Saturday night, you do that. So when you wake up on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, it's like, I'll decorate it. That's awesome. I may snag that from you. <laughs> well, it was so funny because when, when Karen, when you were like, well, what are we going to talk about? We should talk about our Easter traditions. And I was like, I'm like, I don't have any Easter traditions. <laughs> I'm like, I work for the church. I get home like at 11 o'clock on Saturday night. And thank God for my mom who has at some point bought candy and hidden it in my house. <laughs> for the baskets and we're you know so we're like doing that in the middle of the night and I come home on Easter morning well it's not morning it's afternoon again by the time I get home and hopefully my husband has made he he's the best but like I just I don't make Easter dinner <laughs> I didn't say it had to be your personal trip that is your tradition just being Ryan real makes dinner guys. and your mom hides the baskets I love that Easter rolls around and I'm I'm done. I'm done. It's this year is going to be good though because the school break actually falls after Easter. Yeah. So I'll probably take a few days and we'll have family time like after that to do. You know, and we love to do like well, most of us like to do hikes and stuff. <laughs> we drag the one who doesn't like it with us. <laughs> it's fine. But let me guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but um, we definitely will spend some time that week as a family, just like being together and hopefully getting outside. I feel like that'll yeah. be, hopefully we'll have good weather by then. Yeah. You never I mean, know. It, it, it's totally hard when you work for the church because it, we've talked about this plenty of times that it's hard for mm-hmm. us to be fully present at the liturgies and have that time um, as 
you guys will to be fully engaged because we're always thinking, oh, the candle didn't get lit or I have to go make sure that the holy water is full or that there's ashes ready. You know, like our minds just are working in a different fashion. Um, so my tradition has been on Easter, I got an egg bake recipe for my mom who always made this egg bake for Easter when we were little. Um, and sometimes we'll have my parents and my in-laws over. Sometimes it'll just be the four of us, but we always do breakfast and I'm kind of bad. I make my kids wait to find their baskets until after breakfast. You do that at Christmas too, don't you do that at I Christmas? I do do that at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it, funny, you know, like at Christmas, I said, I'm always the first one up and I make my coffee and I sit by the tree, even though we get home at like 1130, whatever, I'm still the first one up and I just make my tea. I'm, I'm on tea now. I stopped drinking coffee, but I just make my tea and I just sit there and I wait and I make my egg bake and, but it's just, it's like, and what you were saying about Holy Saturday, you cocooning, yeah. that's kind of like that's my my time my my tomb time and to celebrate and and just kind of breathe and um and enjoy having gotten through lent <laughs> and starting easter not not only as a professional getting through lent but also as a as a catholic getting through lent so yeah it's it's really fun um and thank goodness that break is after because i yeah we and, you know, remember, Easter season is even longer than Lent, right? We have 50 days in the Easter season, only Yay! 40 in Lent. So you got time. You got a whole lot of time to, to be Eastering. It's like, it's a process. Yeah. That's something we've talked about every year is like, um, you know, the readings are, are like, well, we perceive them as being like, hey, hallelujah. But like for the people who were there for Jesus, they, it took them time to figure out what the resurrection meant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so for me, the idea that like Easter is 50 days long and we have even longer than we did in Lent to, to walk this journey is, um, is pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm going to plug for Pentecost. So, you know, after, after Easter, our 50 days of, you know, kind of grappling with everything that happened, we're having a big party at Transfiguration, another food truck rodeo to celebrate Pentecost. So I mean, we have Easter to look forward to after Lent. Now we get to look forward to Pentecost and and that celebration too. Um, so yeah, we just well, Pentecost more party, some... new tradition this year. We've yeah. been talking about doing it forever. We're, We're gonna, gonna do it. Happen. It's gonna be Sunday night. There's gonna be food trucks. There's gonna be praise and worship. Adoration. Yep, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. It's gonna be a great way to celebrate the birthday of the Church. Yeah so excited um so one thing i did want to ask you guys in addition to our or maybe not our traditions <laughs> for easter <laughs> um one of the challenges in our book was um to take some time away from screens and so i was wondering what your thoughts are on that if it's going to be easy or hard and i'm laughing because Whenever we have like a church activity and Vicki, you, I thought of you during the Ash Wednesday soup supper because I saw you taking pictures of everybody. And it was really funny because I'm like, oh my gosh, how many times is my phone up taking pictures, capturing a moment rather than keeping it in my pocket, capturing it in my head and being present. Yeah. And, um, so I'm particularly, my husband and I joke with each other, like you're on your phone too much. And he'll say it to me and I'm like, not as much as you. And then he'll, you know, say it back to me, but I'm really going to focus on that this year. And to, you know, if the, if I'm home, the phone is, you know, in the kitchen. And if anybody needs me, it's just hard because now we don't have home phones. Right. Any, okay. Like just it, for the younger people who might be viewing this. Back in the day, you would have a phone that lived in your house and never moved, and it was I'm attached to the wall. It was plugged. And you in. answered it like this, not like this. <laughs> Just have I ever visual. Told, yeah. Have I ever told you guys when I was growing up, we had a phone upstairs in the hallway, so I could pull the phone into my bedroom and shut the door, and then 
the base of the phone and then the earpiece okay which kids was also attached to their base of the phone i could pull just the earpiece into my closet for privacy to talk to my friends on the phone when i was in high school <laughs> until someone else called because that was another thing you guys like it was one line and everybody in the family used it and if okay. you were on the yeah. internet you would get kicked off if someone picked up the phone to call oh yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh. Guys were old. All right. Okay. Wait, Andrew, one more but thing. very important note for those younger that might not know that there used to be phones in the house. <laughs> okay. I won't even mention that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was going to talk about like, I was, lis I was listening to um, NPR and they were talking about um, like living in social media and somebody was like, yeah, I remember my I am screen name and I like, instantly remembered mine i was like oh my gosh and i haven't used for, okay kids that was instant messenger from like you know like the before apple type of thing and you had an im name and you had to log on to chats oh my gosh i'm old but yeah i instantly remembered my im name and then they were talking about myspace and all this stuff and i was like oh my gosh i'm old so okay i digress okay, so it's a segue from the social media you know back to easter yeah not all bad though. I mean, I get the like not have, you know, taking a break from screen time being a really healthy thing to do, but sometimes you can see things that come across your feed and every even things that aren't like explicitly religious that just have if you're coming at it from a lens of listening for God, you can find God everywhere, right? Like I will still remember this like one online video that somebody shared and it was just a couple dancing. It wasn't even but I looked at this couple dancing and I was like that is the relationship I want to have with God uh -huh. because she was so responsive as he was leading her. And it was like, it was fun and it was a little bit flirty and it was, you know, totally not choreographed and she was just following him. And it was this like beautiful. I'm like, how would, that's what I want my, my prayer life to be. I want to be that responsive that God is like, okay, we're going to do a dip now. <laughs> It's going to be a little scary, but it's going to be awesome. Just hang on. Right. And I'll be like, I'm here for it. Um, you know, so I just feel like there's lots of, I don't know. And yeah. So, and like being responsive in Easter season too, I think, because yeah. we talk about all through Lent, letting go and you know, especially this Lent, like things being deconstructed and like now we're rebuilding, but in order to rebuild, you need to discern like what God's calling you each step of the way. It's not like a one time and it's done. It's like, this is. Now the dance starts, you know, yeah. now we're going to, we're going to have to listen every day to see like, where, where's God leading in this way and that way. And, you know, I was thinking about like Mary Magdalene showing up at the tomb in all four of our gospels, like she shows up to care for a body, but instead they have to build a church. Yeah. You know, like there's always a next now call. Our plan. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I will not going back to your original question because as we know my whole job now is screens <laughs> to a certain <laughs> extent <laughs> um, but uh, I think you know one of the things that I've tried to like use as a way to balance is doing what I have to do putting it down for a little bit or I think too, just having that time. And for me, it's usually at night to reflect. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to a podcast and he ends every single episode asking his guests, like, what are the three things you're grateful for? Uh, and I've been trying to just incorporate that into my life. And I think especially with Easter, a season when we are in this like time of like next things, what can you be grateful for each day? I think, you know, even those small moments can be just really important to hold on to. And um, we're obviously we recorded these early. I'm going to um, an event on the night of Easter. Um, hey. you know, my <laughs> are, that's how we are celebrating Easter. So I will be taking lots of pictures at that for sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but make sure you're present. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I speak for all of us when when we talk about gratitude, um, how much gratitude we have for all of you who are watching with us, who are coming up to us at 
mass or events um, and just expressing how much you are enjoying these. Um, I mean, we do it for you. And so it's really nice to hear that it is being received and um, and that you guys enjoy it. So we are very grateful that you are taking the time to watch these or listen to them and um, and help along with your journey. So thank you guys. It's yeah. And let us know, because we're, we're brainstorming ideas for the next series. We're, <laughs> we're not gonna wait until Advent. I think we're gonna try to do something um, springtime or summer. So, um, and maybe on like a, a topic that's not necessarily the lectionary. So not necessarily the Sunday reading. So if you have requests for topics <laughs> you would like to see us address, uh, drop them in the comment section or, you know, talk to us when you see us at church and let us know what your thoughts are because we would love to do something a little bit different next time. Well, guys, what do you say? Happy Easter. Yay. Happy Hallelujah. Easter. Enjoy, Enjoy the graces. The presents, be open. Be grat- you know, be grateful. And um, we wish you all a very blessed Easter season, not just a day. And um, we will be in touch with what we're doing next. Thank you so much. Make sure you're subscribed so you know when we are heading back on. On behalf of Anne, Karen, and myself, thank you again for listening to this episode of Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. Please make sure to subscribe to wherever you're listening or watching this episode. You can find the readings linked in the description box below. And we can't wait to see you again next time on Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. With your favorite not-so-typical church ladies.